Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Oh no. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Hey, hey. They say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Oh no. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business because they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Oh no, Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. Okay. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit, You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold on. Do okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Y'all set the glasses was a hit, so I had to bring them back. <laughs> I had to bring them back. Oh. <laughs> I had to bring them back, girl. So, um, I love you guys. Welcome back to my show. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay. Please hit the like. I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys will hit the like because you guys are wonderful and I'm wonderful, let's just like be wonderful together, right? So, please hit the like. Please hit the like. So, the title says. Diddy's gay lovers are exposing him. They are. Rodney Lil Rod Jones full lawsuit breakdown. All the details. Okay. Now I wasn't fully telling the truth when I said, and I'm a girl, that it's going to be a full breakdown. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what the I'm talking about. Okay. But I'm about to guess. Oh, well. 
Okay. So you attorneys of the chat, you attorneys in the chat. You can try to correct me if you want to. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. So um, I'm about to read. I know some of these words. Okay. I don't know all of them. The trigger warning. <laughs> Messing up words, uh, warning. Don't fully know the definition, warning. Probably nobody talking about warning. All of that, okay? That's just what that word, all right? That's just what that word, whatever. So, um, yes, now we about to speculate and commiserate, <laughs> okay? What's going on of the own? That's just what that word. Now, hi, everyone. I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Okay, so am I. Let's leave that out. I'm going to pull these court documents up. Now, the first thing that we need to know about these court documents is that Diddy is gay as hell. Absolutely. Diddy is overly gay. Diddy is too gay to function. He absolutely is. That's what that word, Diddy. I'm about to put your life on the screen. <clears throat> Let's put his life on the screen. And I'm a girl. Look at them. Yes, Diddy, look at here. Ho, ho, ho. We got it. <laughs> Diddy, look at here. Ho, ho, ho. We got it. Okay? We got you being gay on paper. Now, you tried it. Now, it says Rodney Jones, okay, he is the plaintiff. Okay? Now, from what I understand, plaintiff mean is the person complaining. And then oh, 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 it says verse, that's the V, yes, that's the V. Let me put, look, look, attorneys in the room, that's the V, that means verse. That's what that word, okay? Don't, don't, don't y'all come here trying to correct me. And then it says Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, very gay name, Ethiopia, uh, Habitamarium, yes. Yes, that's what that say. Say Ethiopia habits him in the marerium in the girl. That's what that say. And then it say Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Coram, girl, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group. Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's one through ten. Okay. And ABC Corporations one through ten. Okay. Yes, yeah, Motown. That's the goddess girl. Motown and I'm a girl. Baby Shay, everybody. Okay. They said Rodney, who you suing? He said everybody. <laughs> they said Rodney, who you suing? He said everybody. Everyone, he said, I want to press everything, okay? He don't want to press a charge. He want to press every charge that you can, okay? So, baby, said, he's suing everybody, girl. Everybody that done walked through the, 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 the doors, girl, is in a lawsuit, and I'm a girl. That's what that word. So, um, yay, yeah, so now I say trigger warning, y'all. Now, look at here. They say, baby, so the gas, oh, girl, I cannot hate Miss Keisha, girl. Um, now look, y'all look. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Now it says trigger warning. This document contains highly graphic information of a actual nature, including SA. Additionally, there are graphic images of aftermath of a uh, pop powering, redacted images of intercourse. Redacted images of, ooh, minors, ooh, not minors, Lord. Uh, Ex-workers, osteoots, details of uh, sex, uh, you know, out with, it, and there's a bunch of cars out there, y'all. Gridlock, rush hour. You know what rush hour is? When you hit rush hour, you're going to hit a lot of what? Girl. Oh, my God. I said, oh, this look like Cassie lawsuit all over again, girl. I said, oh, my word. So y'all look at me. And it says, the illegal distribution, uh, dis, uh, distribution girl, of GUNs and drugs. Girl. Oh, my God. 
It say plaintiff Rodney Little Rod Jones, Mr. Jones, hereby alleges as and for his complaint against defendant Sean Combs, Mr. Combs. Okay, so the defendant is a, a puffin. Okay, it's Sean Hodge Churn and your man Combs, girl. That's just what that word. Okay, so he the defendant, he the person that the plaintiff, which is Rodney. It's going after, okay? So the defender got to defend himself. Is that is that okay with the lawyers in the house? Plaintiff means complaining. <laughs> complaint, okay? Defending means defend against a complaint. Nah, I don't y'all come in here talking about some, he don't know what he talking about. Just because I'm blue suede to a suit and a big teeth over there, okay? Just because I'm not trying to lead as an attorney uh, 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 in a whole bunch of defense uh, 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 cases, and I'm a girl, that I didn't go to school for, okay? And I'm not sitting over here with no criminal case, but I went to school for family law, okay? Uh, uh, and I'm a girl, nah. He's sitting over there. He's supposed to be talking about divorces and who get custody. But he's sitting over there breaking down Tosh K now. Like, that's what he went to school for. Nah. So if I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, neither do he. Neither do he, okay? So if you listen to Blue Sway Suits, okay? You can listen to the David Way and I'm a girl because don't neither one of us got an education of what the hell this is right here. That's what that word. Now it says defender Justin Dior Combs, J Combs, okay, which is did his son, all right. Defended Lucian, ooh, he had the devil. Charles Grange, yeah, he is guilty. I don't know who he is yet, but he's guilty. Uh, Mr. Grange, and then defendant Chalice Record Recording, sorry, Studios, which is CRS. So, so now when they're going through the through the thing. For the people in the back, when we start going through this, nah, when you hear say Mr. Jones, we talking about Lil Rod, who is the plaintiff, okay? And when you hear Mr. Combs, that's the defendants, and I'm a girl, and that's Sean Combs. When we say Mr. Grange, that's Lucifer, okay? Because his name is Lucerian, and I'm a girl. So a uh, uh, Lucifer is short for Mr. Grange, okay? And then defending Ethiopia Habitana Marium, my girl, is Mrs. Habitana Marium. Okay? All right? So when I say Mrs. Habitana Marium, and I'm a girl, I'm talking about Ethiopia, girl. Okay? That's what that word. And then it said defending Christina Karam, my girl, is Miss Karam. She ain't married. Absolutely. She living in sin. And then defending Chalice Records is C R S. Okay, C R S. All right. And then defending Love Records is L R. Okay, that's L R. That's what that word. And then defending Motown Records is M R. Okay. And then defending Universal Music Group is going to be U M G. Okay. Because I'm, I'm saying this thing I want. And then defendant Combs Global Enterprises is CGE, okay? And then we got a whole bunch of John Doe's and Danes. It's at least, it's at least 10 of them because they want to 10. And then the people at the ABC Corporations is at least 10 of them as well because it's a one through 10. That's what that word, okay? For the lawyers in the back, all right? So I am not as, as ignorant and a runt as I look. All right. Now let's get into uh, uh, this story, okay? Because I'm about to make it juicy. So it says jurisdiction and venue, okay? Now, lawyers, this is the place, okay? What a lawsuit gonna be? Who got the juror of the stiction? All right. And then the uh, 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 venue is where uh, some of these things that took place, and I'm a girl. Mm hmm. Just when y'all thought y'all had me, you don't, okay? So now let's read it. The court has personal jurisdiction over the defendants under and uh, 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 consistent with the constitutional requirements of due process in that the defendants acting directly or through his agents or apparent agents committed one or more of the following, okay? So they said Diddy and allegedly his son and Lucifer and Ethiopian them 
they did some of this shit I'm about to read. That's what that were. Okay, black people. That's what that were. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Now it says the transaction of any business within the state. The making of any contact within the state. That's what they're saying. Look, this is why we got jurisdiction, okay? Because of the transactions. The making of any contract within the state. The commission of, what is that? A torturous? <laughs> to torturous? <laughs> Act within this district and the ownership, use, or possession of any real estate in this state. And I'm a girl. From September 2022 to the date of this filing, defendants have consistently and purposefully availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. In return for these benefits and protections, defendants must submit to the burgeons of litigations, burdens, sorry, <laughs> burdens of litigation in New York. This litigation arises from or relates to the, to, is it to torturous? Activities defendants visited upon defendants in the state of New York, California, Florida, and the United States Virgin Island. Ooh, Diddy, you just, you got hoes. So, um, and I'm a girl. And then it says this, uh, to torturous, I like, I kind of like this word. I like it. Conduct violated United States federal RICO laws. And not my girl, that go that Rico. Oh, 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 he's with that Rico. Requiring defendants to litigate these claims in this district does not offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. Plaintiff's claims arise from some conduct occurring by defendants in New York. Parties. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. Okay, now this is a plaintiff. Okay. And then the defendant, Mr. Combs. Sean Combs is a rapper, no yang, a record executive popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffin, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love, or Love, or Gay, or Homo, Honey, uh, a Sweetness. It just depends on where you go. Take that, take that. Yes. Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip-hop murderer. Um, uh, well, it's a mogul, but... Hmm. Mr. Combs resides at 200 South Mapleton Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90024. Again, Mr. Combs resides at 200 South Mapleton Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90024. Docks. Docks. Again. Just in case anybody did not hear, Sean Combs' address, okay? Did his address is, and I'm a girl, or as follows, 200 South Mapleton Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90024. That's what that word. What? What? I could dox him. What? <laughs> what? If you want to be a pony, this is where you go. And I'm a young man, uh, and I'm a girl. So if you wanna um be a pony, this is where you gonna be. Be a pony, and I'm a pony. Mm -hmm. Yay! So um, and I'm a girl. I didn't dox him. The this pff, the judge did this, and I'm a girl. I didn't dox some girl. And he go a picture just in case. Hmm. Hmm. Him. Look at him. Look. Gay. Look. Mm, this is him, just in case. You know who he is? Defendant Sean Combs. Defendant Justin Dior Combs is the son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton. Jay Combs was born on December 30th, 1993. Jay Combs is a producer and a... Actor, he has appeared on TV series like Catfish, the TV show Wild and Out, and Hip Hop Squares. What? 
Y'all said they're like them were sitcoms. Um, defendant Justin Dior lives off Diddy Combs, resides at 1550 North El Central Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90028. Again, if you do not know Justin Dior Combs' address, it is as follows. 1550 North El Centro Avenue, o, Los Angeles, o, California, 90028. Okay, I feel like it's somebody in the back that did not get Justin D. or Combs' address in Los Angeles. It is as follows 1550. North El Centro Avenue, yes, Los Angeles, California, 90028. Doxed. No, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them. Doxed. So if you want to be a pony uh, 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 with Justin, go on, on, swing on over. So 1550 North El Central Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90028. That's what that word. I don't know if you just can't one swing by there. Um, and a whatnot, and I'm a girl. It is what it is. Okay. Now, uh, uh, uh here you go. Here go a picture um, just in case you don't know who we talk about. Boom. That's him. That's what that word. So, um, and I'm a girl. There, there you go. Just in case you need to put face and name. Now, defendant uh, Lucian slash Lucifer Charles Grange is the CEO of defendant, which is Combs, Sean Diddy Combs, Universal Music Group. So this is Diddy CO, okay? Uh, he can be found at 53551. Ross Avenue, unit 34A, not 33, 34A, okay? In La Quinta, California, girl. And if he not there, you can also find him at the 92253 location and at the 668 Shinquata, girl, Boulevard, Pacific Palisades, uh, California at uh, 90272, and I'm a girl. So just in case anybody was needing to speak with Lucian Charles Grange, the CEO of Diddy's Universal Music Group that is also in this lawsuit, and I'm a girl, he resides at 53551 Ross Avenue, Unit 34, not 33A, La Quinta, California. And if he is a not their girl, if he ain't their girl, he at the 92253 or at the 668 Shanquata Boulevard, Pacific Palisades, California, 90272. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? 034. Ha, ha, ha. That's what that word. But this is all public knowledge. This is all public knowledge. They have everything to do with this. They're being sued. Mm -hmm. He's suing them too. Yeah, they're not just on a, 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 a lawsuit because they're buddies. Uh -uh. No, he's being sued. He's a defendant. Let me make this a little bit bigger, see? It says, defendant, meaning person defending himself, also being sued. <laughs> he got a lot to do with this. He's being sued. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, girl. <laughs> Here, flip. And I'm a girl. I don't know, girl. <laughs> Period. Please stop by the security booth. Check yourself in. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what that word. Um, now, I'm not going to... Wait, hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Who is there? Okay, now, and here he go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, Blanca Devil. <laughs> Ooh, block a devil, girl. There he go. What, Lissandra, girl? What? 
Oh my God. Block a devil. Um, and I'm a girl. So hey, go a picture of him just in case you know. Ho ho ho. This who run Universal Music Group for Diddy. Mm-hmm. He gay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here, here go a picture of him. Just in case, son, I'm my girl. Shout out to my baby. I'm just, she says, hit the like and pass the collection and play and drop a 10 or 20 in that. <laughs> and I'm a girl. I deserve this. I deserve this. I'm just, thank you so much, sweetheart. She said, and she said, another super sticker. She says, was it unit 23? 34A, girl. <laughs> 34A, and I'm a girl. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just shout out to Carla as well for the super stickers. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm a girl, so y'all, that's what that word. So um, let's keep going. I ain't gonna dox the women. I said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna let them be. Shout out to Christina. Shout out to Ethiopia. I'm not gonna dox y'all because y'all is ladies. And I don't want nothing to happen to y'all, okay? But as far as Justin, oh well. Uh, Diddy, oh well. And uh, Lucifer, oh well. Okay, y'all is the defendants, okay? Defend. That's all I can tell you, okay? But I'm not going to dox the women. I'm going to leave Ethiopia alone, girl. I ain't, I ain't going to do that to you, girl. And I ain't going to dox, um, oh, girl, what's, what's her name? Scroll past what's that? Uh, 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 Ethiopia and uh, 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 Christina, and I'm a girl. I ain't going to dox y'all, girl. But we is going to dox Motown. Defending Motown record label with a principal place of business located at 1750 Vine Street, Los Angeles, California. And I'm a girl. Um, and uh, Ethiopia, uh, Hamanamatama Mary, I'm a girl, was the chairman and CEO of the music group's Motown Records, girl. So he's still in the seat. Oh, and I'm a girl. I was like, oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So y'all, he's still in her and I'm a girl. And I'm about to uh, 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 dox Universal Music Group as well. So, um, D- Defending Universal Music Group is a record label with a principal player. Could we have it right there? Okay. 2022 Colorado. Did we get that? 2022. Uh, uh, 2220 Colorado Avenue in Santa Monica, California. Over there by the college that uh, 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 Kim went to. And I'm a girl on the park. Okay. Okay. Her name is Ethiopia, girl. Uh, Mana Nana Miriam. Yes, that's as close as I got to pronounce her last name. But I'm um, not a Miriam and I'm a girl. So I'm um, guessing on that little piece of Ethiopia. Yes. Yes, Ethi was the CEO, Lindsay. Girl. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. I'm a girl. So I'm um, a girl. We popping them. We popping them all. So um, y'all let me know if y'all need Diddy or Justin uh, 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 Lucifer address again. No problem. Um, now, it said right here, Defendant Combs Enterprises is a diverse portfolio of businesses and investments that includes music, fashion, fragrance, beverage, marketing, film, television, and media properties. They have a principal place of business located in New York, New York. What would I the person that address that? I'm my girl. Anyways, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, okay? Now, this is a plaintiff, the person that is suing Diddy. Let's get into his team. Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi-Town. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second eldest of uh, and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church, and at the uh, and at that age of thirteen, at the age of thirteen, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present day, Mr. Jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. And I'm a girl. And I said right here, uh, Mr. Jones, the child prodigy. Okay, that's a picture of him. They bleeped everybody else out. So we guessing he the one that wasn't bleeped out. And I'm a girl. That's what that word. Now let's keep on going. It's a shame Diddy doing this to prodigies, Lord. Uh, Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. See, I just told y'all to hear prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the music history. Okay. Throughout the duration of his career, Mr. Jones has worked with South Side of Chicago music scene, playing with the following legendary greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clock Sisters, and Smoking uh, Orpha. 
on or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album off the Gay Grid. Love album, gay album, and I'm a girl is what that word. Mr. Jones agreed, and his life has been detrimentally impacted, right, detrimentally, as, or ever since, and I'm a girl, and I believe him. Summary of events, okay, let's get into this because it's gross. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. So, um, Rodney, did you realize that y'all go together? Like he did Meek Mill? See, he did this to Meek Mill, too, and I'm a girl. He did it to him, too. He looked up, and they was in matching outfits. They adopted a little person, and, you know, and I'm a girl. And they was just over there real gay. So, um, yes, so y'all was going together because what you missed on holidays for that album sucked. So it's just like, and I'm a girl, you was missing holidays and birthdays and all of that stuff. And I'm like, do you have a woman? You ain't got no girl. And I'm a girl. So you just missing out on complete life, getting harassed. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. So you was just over there. I'm a pony. I'm a pony. Here we are. How unfortunate. So I'm um, yeah, let's keep reading. I'm like, not birthdays, holidays, not this. I'm not missing none of that stuff for no damn Diddy. He's not even hot. I'm like, he he's like mediocre. And he looked like he breathes hard. I'm like, ew. You sitting over there with Mr. Like, oh my God. So, like, Graham, all oh, this gay. Let me get into it. Girl, you, you was in a whole relationship. You got a girlfriend? Okay, we'll get your ass up and hold my hand. You do now. Oh, my God. You let him respect you, you girl. It says, Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Yeah, y'all was going together. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay, so this is why I'm assuming the Virgin Islands um, are attached to it. So, yeah, y'all was, y'all were basically, like, engaged. Um, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as the producer on the Love album. The claims raised in the complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video, audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. So he said he got all the tea. He got all of the tea, okay? I got everything y'all need, period. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Jones, sorry, Mr. Combs, took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of Snow Shane, GHB, Ketz, and I'm a mean, I'm a girl. Mary and Wanna girl and mush in the full of rooms and I'm a girl. Yes. The displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal weapon, just like Cassie said. So yet yeah, you were Cassie. Mm-hmm. Yes. And did you have to put his weapon in your purse too, girl? Because Cassie did. She did. Did you have to put it in your purse too, girl? Rodney. Did you have to put it in your purse too, girl? Did he intimidate you like that too, girl? We got your back. Nah. 
Blink one for yes and two for no. And I'm a girl. Because you saying all the... Because he said... Uh, she said he had all that stuff out like candy. Yes. Like a buffet. Like being at a golden corral. But all... Narcotics. Yes. So, girl, you saw that too, right, nigga? Ooh, girl. Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and ex-workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. So... You watched it? Okay. So you were around these minors that this stuff was happening to. And you didn't do nothing? Why does nobody do nothing? I really don't get that. Like, why do y'all want to say that, you know, minors and all of this stuff, people were being, you know, and all of this stuff. You know, though. And y'all do nothing until Mad Day. Because Diddy did take the publishing of the nine songs that he did do on the song Love. This is where this all started. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that it's retaliation because I do feel like Rodney was already planning on suing Diddy um, for what he's suing him for now. But because um, he did raise money on like a GoFundMe and whatnot to raise funds to sue Diddy for his publishing. Not to sue Diddy for this. I guess he had the coin to do this. And I'm a girl. But um, I guess he didn't have the coin to sue for the publishing. Because he had to go find me. Rodney. Okay. You know it's hard out here for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent. So I'm um, and I'm a girl. Because it's, yeah. Um, you're, you're definitely giving opportunist with things like this. Meaning you were completely fine. With allowing, you know, these alleged miners and other people, um, workers and whatnot, to be being, you know, earned, you know, and poisoned, you know, and whatnot, as long as your check was gonna clear. I feel like you didn't get paid yet. So you're you're around Diddy all these months and we're not doing all of this work. You're waiting for the check. You know, he'll he'll supply you a lavish lifestyle. You know, you'll you'll live good, you'll eat good, um, he'll make sure that you have whatever you need. <clears throat> narcotics and stuff wise and you know wise and you know and all that he'll make sure that you're good and that that's his way of feeding you you know being around him is clout you know me even talking to you you know is clout so you weren't paid yet because i feel like if you were maybe you would have said something maybe you would have done something but since you weren't you were doing what you needed to do to protect your money that doesn't make it okay because god doesn't like ugly that's why you never got paid mm -hmm. You see, the whole publishing and all of that stuff, that was your bread and butter, you know, getting the publishing on the record. So the better the record does with publishing and royalties and all of that stuff for you um, as well, you'll get a percentage of those things. But Diddy took it all away. I believe Diddy took it all away because y'all broke up. Rod, you were sleeping with Diddy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. From what I'm getting, you were dating Diddy. You're spending birthdays, holidays, all of this stuff away from your family. Like, and stuff like that. A person that, I mean, I get like doing these things for your job, but if you're not working, because you can't make me believe Diddy was recording on Christmas. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Diddy was around his kids and all that stuff. He was at his house. So why couldn't you have one home? It gives you could have. <clears throat> That was your man, is what this gives. That you and Diddy were dating. Because he likes your type. Felix the cat, same thing. Y'all have like the same persona. And they were linked as well. Um, yeah. So it gives y'all were dating. It doesn't give um, you were around as a hetero male and people were doing that. No. It gives you were complicit. It gives that you were giving consent. Um, when Diddy was touching you and stuff like that, I felt like, I mean, I feel like, um, if y'all at that point in time, maybe that was like at the beginning before he coerced you or made you feel 
kind of like you didn't have a choice um, into being with him because a person like Diddy feels like he gets what he wants. You know, he feels like he's God. You know, he's untouchable. Um, if you were so when he sees something, he feels like he can get it. No different than Cassie. He wasn't willingly dating her. Why would I think he was willingly dating you? Now, what's the high probability of me that feels like maybe you weren't in for that? You didn't want to be with Diddy, you know, or anything like that. It, it could have been he liked what he saw and just, you know, because he called you specifically. Like, he called you. So that means that he wanted you. He chose you. Okay? And I think he kind of just pulled you in it. You looked up and, you know, you were underneath certain, uh, under certain substances and stuff that you had no idea about. And that maybe that's how you found out about, you know, the minors and stuff like that being because you were too um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I kind of, I think it would it just happen quick. It happened really fast. Like with Cassie, it just happened. You know, he went from picking her up to she was flying all around the world with him, living with him from house to house to house to house. You were doing the same thing. So it gives that you were dating. Not, and maybe it was forced. Maybe, I don't know, because he forced Cassie. He didn't ask Cassie, do you want to be my girlfriend? He just took her. She was in a whole relationship when um, Diddy pursued her. No different than Kim Porter. She was basically married, from what I gather. Her and Abby Shaw were married. Um, when Diddy snatched her out of that relationship, I don't feel like Kim went with Diddy willingly. I think it's no different than Cassie. She looked up and all of a sudden she was just in a relationship with this dude. She was just in a relationship with this man. You cannot convince me that Kim then go through 20 times worse things than Cassie probably ever did. I feel like it was way worse for Kim. I do. I think it was way worse um, for her. I, I do. I think that she went through a lot, a lot, a lot controlled until the day she left here um, type of situation is how I feel. I think she went through a lot. And I think that she was just afraid to tell her story. Why wouldn't she be? I think she was petrified of losing everything, losing her children, um, her fam, just losing everything. Just, I think she was in fear. And I think that's why she was trying to quietly, anonymously get her story out. And when she did, all of a sudden she was gone. Pneumonia, allegedly. Um, she's just gone all of a sudden. So yeah, I think Cassie, there was chapters in Cassie's book of Kim Porter. I would have loved to hear what Cassie would have said in the stories that her and Kim exchanged because Cassie and Kim were close. I believe Cassie and Kim were close because of the bond, trauma. I think that's why they bonded so quickly because Kim was older than Cassie and felt bad for her. And felt badly, like, girl, I was you. But I had a kid. You know, I, I was you. I, I know what you're going through. And I think that's why other women, even Gina, that interviewed on Online with Tasha K, she said that when she did talk to Cassie, Cassie was just warning her to get away from Diddy. And Cassie was still with Diddy. She was just telling her, like, girl, go. Like, get out of here. It's not worth it. Like, get out of here. Um, Yeah. So I think Cassie knows a lot. And I think that's why Diddy settled with her immediately. Because she know everything. Cassie know next to everything. Even stuff when it stems to Biggie, Pac, Suge. I mean, it goes back. Like Cassie has been around for a long time. But no one knew more than Kim. That's why Cassie is still alive and Kim is gone. <clears throat> I, I, in my in the pits of my soul, I feel like Kim is gone because she knew everything. Cassie, more rumors, but Kim was there, literally from the nineties all the way, you know, until she passed. So I think that's why she's gone. She's gone because no, now he can handle some whistleblowing, but her type of whistleblow. No. Cassie knew less. He he knew, you know, 
she she know a decent amount, but not like Kim. That's why Cassie, I believe, is still alive. One hundred percent, absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. And now it would be like nearly impossible for him to do anything to Cassie because there's too many eyes on her. He, if he, if anything happens to her, he already know. He already know. Cassie slipped, you know, I agree with the person in the chat that said Cassie slipped through the cracks. I think Cassie slipped through because Diddy thought he was safe with the settlement. He didn't think Cassie was still going to submit it in public court. He didn't think that. Mm -mm. That's why we only got the Cassie, like, in the, like, the lawsuit we have right here with Rodney's. That's why we only got hers. We didn't get, like, Diddy's response, you know, his team's, mm -mm. and the information that they had and the receipts that they had. We ain't going to aim to get that far. You know, Diddy's like, no, settle immediately, you know, with her because she's a truth teller and he knows that people are going to believe her. And Cassie, again, it wasn't just him settling because of the receipts that Cassie had. He mainly settled because of her tell-all book. Cassie already had a book written. It was ready to go. It was ready to go. It was not only a tell-all book, but a memoir of her life with Diddy. He did not want those things out. So his settlement was buying those things. He bought Cassie's tell-all and he bought her memoir. Like he purchased them. Okay. So if she comes out with another one, he can't be discussed. She would basically have to talk about like her life with her and Alex or like her life before Diddy. She can't talk about him. That it's a wrap with that. And you best believe his attorney's got that set in stone so that she can't utter his name pretty much. Like you can't speak of me. Okay, at all. So that's what Cassie sold, you know, basically. You know, like, okay, we're here. Yeah, I guess, you know. So she can't speak of this at all. So yeah, I think that Rodney was dating Diddy. That's what I get. Mr. Combs providing laced alcohol beverages to nurse workers at his home in California, New York, and the Virgin Islands and Florida. Mr. Combs' chief or staff Christina instructing her staff to retrieve so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for consumption. Okay. Now, Cassie used to do the same thing for Diddy. She used to get prescriptions and stuff for him. Okay. Because he owned, you know, no pill regimens and stuff in certain places. So kind of like how Elvis was. Elvis was the same way. Like he would have to have other people get it for him or he would go to multiple doctors, even like dentist. Um, and whatnot to get the things that he needed um, or was addicted to, I should say. Christian Combs, again, and essaying a woman. Wow. Christian is Diddy's other son, his son by Kim Porter. So this is deep. This lawsuit is deep. Okay. Not only is Justin in the lawsuit, so is Christian of wrongdoing, okay? And essaying women, crazy. Like father, like son, like crazy. <laughs> Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. <laughs> Excuse me? <coughs> Grill. <coughs> A little birdie told me that... A little birdie told me that... Remember the TikTokers that were going around with the story about T.D. Jakes and Diddy and the Diddy parties? I was told that certain people that are connected to Cassie had that done, not like Cassie. I didn't hear that Cassie wanted it done, but to protect Cassie and her image of Diddy trying to make her look like a liar, I hear that they put the story and the recording out of them stating that Bishop T.D. Jakes was going to be getting arrested because of dot, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. 
because if you noticed, that recording was not viral, although it wasn't a new recording. That recording was not viral until the lawsuit with Cassie. So I heard that people that deal with her made sure that that information got out there so that it could, you know, kind of, you know, kind of counteract what Diddy was trying to do with T.D. Jakes. So it was like, okay, well, T.D. Jakes is just as bad because, you know, so pop him too so that he can't go to him because I believe that that was Diddy's next move um, as well because that's why he went to the church but did not announce that he was there. Um, Diddy or T.D. Jakes was going to help him do some damage control um, and that didn't happen. So, girl, because it kind of makes sense. I'm like, okay, well, that did just kind of come out of nowhere that whole situation with Diddy um, and T.D. Jakes. I thought that was kind of weird. But anyways, um, Young Miami's cousin and or assistant as saying Mr. Jones, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Esley Harassing and S.A. Mr. Jones. So not only did Diddy do this, but so did Cuba Gooding Jr. So you and Diddy had a threesome, I guess? Well, Cuba was trying. Oh my God. Yes, the actor, Megan James. Yes. The actor. Correct. The actor. I cannot. But here is the thing. Cuban Gooden Jr. has been um, charged and accused of S-A-N-S harassing. A lot, but all women, from what I gather. So this isn't like, yes, Island, yes, a few times, a few different women, correct. So it's not far-fetched. It, it, it's not, it is not far-fetched. It is not far-fetched. So I'm like, wow, this is crazy. A rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht, consorting with underage and workers. Ex-workers. Wow. R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage. Now, from what I'm gathering, this alleged R&B singer is Usher. The R&B singer that he is referring to is allegedly Usher. Okay, because I also believe in this. Um, there, he states that um, the artist that just performed at the Super Bowl, Usher just performed at the Super Bowl. Correct. Correct. And you know, Usher and Diddy go way back. So, um, and I'm a girl. So, let's keep going. Chalice Records Studio Pop Howling. On or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writers and producers camp at Chalice Recording Studio at 845 Highland Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90038. Present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son, Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old, tall, African-American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer has spoken to several mus musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, Justin Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. The conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent 
to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when Pop House rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple Pow Pows. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The writer spoke with several employees of the yacht rented, rented Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands, who personally witnessed defendant Karam instruct her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond Spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. So it says here, this writer spoke with several of the employees of the yacht, rented Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands, who personally witnessed, who personally, so these several employees witnessed personally, defended Karam instruct her staff, Brendan Paul and Frankie Santella and Moy Bond spike the bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Diddy. This is what you do. Everybody says that you do this. Keith Murray, all of them, they've all say, stated this. Like, you, we know which bottles to drink. You know, we drink the ones over here, and then, you know, Diddy had the ones for the, over there for all the other people, you know, and then they all get messed up, you know, and all that. So they have no idea that they are drinking these things and taking to see like they have no idea but you do that because most people it loosens them up in way or more ways than one even men it, it's the same thing with men you, you're doing stuff that you wouldn't normally do you know and it, yeah, grab craziness crazy this is crazy let's keep reading um it says a complaint is forthcoming he is a philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Now, this is where Meek Mill comes in. So the people at the beginning of this that thought that when it said the um, R&B artist, the, the singer, was Meek Mill. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's in here too. It's just that person they're talking about. That is Usher, allegedly, that we read above. Well, actually, let me go back up to it. Right here. Um, R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs. Redacted means that they removed his name, but it's, you know, so we can't see it right here. Otherwise, it would say Usher, but they have the information, but we don't have like right here. Um, in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with girls and workers, okay? That is allegedly Usher, okay? And then right here, he is a Philadelphia rapper who, clears the, who dated Nicki Minaj. Clearly, they're talking about Meek Mill. Um, he is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with the law enforcement after a single Bajan billionaire. So these are two other. So these are two other artists, which is Meek, and then there's another artist. That's not Usher. This so this second person right here that they're talking about. He is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer. This is another singer, not Usher. Okay, Chris Brown. Okay, so the first one is Meek Mill. He is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. And the second one, he is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajan billionaire or a Bajan billionaire. That is Rihanna. Chris Brown. Okay. Mm. Girl. And the plot thickens. And the plot thickens. Oh my goodness. I said, oh, I gotta go live and talk to my people about this. It's like, oh my God, they're dropping the tea. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be pow powed next. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be popped through the door due to how close he was. After the pow-powing ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. 
When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Justin exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in the fetal position, holding his stomach, bleeding out his leg and hip area. Girl, y'all really think Shine did that back in the day at that club? Y'all really think that was shine? This is what did he do? Why y'all think Cassie was so scared? You see how he popped this man? Didn't go to jail? Nothing. Because it wasn't Justin that did that. It was Justin's friend. That's how you know it was Diddy. It wasn't Justin. I will put money on it that it was Diddy because it was Justin's friend. G is, in is entered as Justin's friend so why would it have been justin why would he go in there and pop his own friend no that was definitely diddy so i understand like the impact of him being afraid of diddy like i get it i mean again diddy feels like he's god he thinks he can do whatever he wants when he wants there's no law he's not above there's no law underneath his feet that's just how he is that's just how he get down girl so he said that g was laying on the ground in the fetal position and he was bleeding out everyone stood around looking upon g frustrated by the lack of aid to g mr jones dropped everything ran to g and immediately began placing pressure on g's pop how wound to his stomach Wow. So it took Mr. Jones, I mean, it took him to do something. Nobody else was doing anything. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area near his leg hip. He decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. When Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the pow powing. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them G was pow powed standing outside the studio by a drive by assailant. Girl, this is getting good. Girl, this is getting good. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. So he was made to lie to the police about what had happened in oh my girl. Okay, he know that it happened inside, that it was in the bathroom, all of that. Because how do you say that this happened outside of the studio when the and all of that is in the bathroom? I thought it happened outside. If it happened outside, then why is there's no blood coming from the outside in? Okay, how the blood is transported, you can tell which way it's going, right? So if you're walking somebody out and, you know, there's drippings and stuff like that, it's going, you know, and I'm a girl. So if you would have brought the person in from them getting pop out outside, there would have been something out, but some blood are outside. That's where the majority of it would have been. It would have been more there than inside, right? And then when you bring the person in and then have to bring them back out, because again, if, they, if it happened outside of the studio, you would have to explain how the blood got into the restroom. So if you're saying he was pop out of the studio, we brought him in here in the bathroom, you know, and we noticed it was bad. Then we called the ambulance and then we brought him back outside. Okay, but then there will be, you know, they can tell all of that, right? So I'm like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Besides Diddy using his money and power to, because he literally did that to that man. Like, it explains Diddy. It got Diddy written all over it. And then you got 
Justin being a part of it as well. So the, his children are even complicit in doing things too. You know, <clears throat> this is crazy. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. Um, wow, this is insane. So it says right here, here's the article. It says, man pop hop outside, outside party at Hollywood recording studio. And then it says right here, at least one person was piled at a party at a Hollywood recording studio, police said Monday. Officers were called to the 800 block of North Highland Avenue and Willoughby, Willoughby to check into reports of a pow powing at about 3 a.m., according to LAPD. At the location, they found a man that had been piled after stepping outside the studio. The man in his 30s, which they said he was in his 30s, was taken to a hospital in stable condition. He was reportedly piled in the abdomen. Sky 2 was over the scene early Monday, spotted several people sitting outside the location being questioned by police. No information was released about the suspect, and it is not and it's not known if the pop howling was gang related. So this is an article of what act what of what happened, but no details. G said, this is what happened. And Diddy was there. Justin was there. G was there. And so was Mr. Jones. Rodney, he was there too. And as proof, he also um, submitted, is that right here? Uh, okay, because he also, um, he was on the 911 call. Like in the background, I think they heard he like he during the nine one one call, he was like in the background or something, because they were asking him questions. Because I guess he was the one that was like he said at, applying pressure and whatnot. So when um, the paramedic or the first responder or nine one one had questions like about his condition, where he was, da da da, and stuff like that, he was the one talking in the background, Mister Jones, Rodney. So there's plenty of receipts to back what he's saying, plenty. Plenty of receipts. So he's not lying. He's telling the truth. He sure is. Um, and it also says this uh the man is in his 30s, was taken to the hospital, same condition. He was reportedly pumping. Okay, we already read that. Um, okay, Mr. Jones has several corroborating witnesses who spoke with this writer anonymously, anonymously due to the fear of retaliation from Mr. Combs. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. So there are witnesses that state, yeah, we know it was him too. He did do that um, to him. And they don't want to be stated like publicly due to, they don't want to be retaliated against Diddy. But if they are subpoenaed, they will speak. So if you, if, if it's to the point where like, y'all need to subpoena us, we will come. This is a lot bigger than Diddy's trying to make it. Diddy's trying to make this seem like, oh, this is just a money grab. This is that. No. This goes deeper than just being like essayed and harassed. Like, why would that not be traumatic? You hearing somebody get popped and stuff two feet away from you. The, the, the same person that did it is basically, you know, controlling you too, you know, and you're afraid. I mean, if you heard him pop somebody and get away with it, no questions asked. Why would you think that it's just as simple as for you to just like go get your royalties or publishing, you know, and stuff from him? If he gets mad or angry, he can do whatever he want to do to me, basically. And nobody going to know the truth. It's just I'm just gone. So that's a hell of a fear. You know, it's different when um, there's a possibility, you know, of a person being held responsible, meaning if caught being held responsible, whether he get caught or not. He's not being held responsible. Like, I just watched him or heard him. I was two feet away and he popped a whole dude. And if I wouldn't have did nothing, he basically would have passed away. So if not for me, you know, that's a pretty scary situation. I would have to admit. And Diddy got a big bunch of, you know, those big old bodyguards and all of the stuff around him. We're not very intimidating. That's an intimidating situation. So when Cassie said that she was afraid, no, why? When these victims, like the Jane Doe that wants to be left anonymous, that wants to sue Diddy but does not want her identity out there, this is why these people are deathly afraid of this man. 
Literally, we don't see that Diddy. We don't see him. All we see is take that, take that. We we see that guy. We we don't see that person. You know, he hides that person. So, I mean, it's a different energy. We know the surface Diddy. You know, they know the dark times Diddy. Now look at this. Here go pictures from the incident. Diddy, you are popped. Diddy, you are popped. Girl, he took pictures. You are popped. This is the studio. This These pictures are from the night. The, the morning, 3 a.m., when this happened. You are popped. Very so much. Yeah. That's why I say he got, when I talked about this in my little surviving video that I did, I said he got receipts. Like a lot of them. He's not just saying these things. He is proving them. Yeah. He's not just saying it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Receipts. Proof. Why do you think the judge has accepted his lawsuit? They accepted this. This is real. This is going down. This is happening. This is why Diddy's afraid of lawsuits, like with Cassie. Criminal charges can be brought up against you, okay? You do not get to break the law and be protected from it because you're being sued for finances. No, it can turn criminal. <clears throat> why wouldn't this turn criminal? This is a crime. There's no statute of limitation on this. Mm -mm. It don't matter if this was 50 years ago, 100 years ago. So? There's no statute of limitation on this. Mm -mm. No, no, no. No. He can get charged like it happened yesterday. He can get charged like it happened today. He sure can. Mm -hmm. 100%. This is a different lawsuit. See, what Cassie, he gave a big bulk of his money, right? Because you, you, you best believe he paid her immediately. He ain't waste no time cutting that check. I don't think he knew that this man had all this. Because I think he would have shut him up immediately. And it's not too late. We could look up and this lawsuit just go away. Absolutely. How Diddy works? Oh, yeah. We can look up and this lawsuit could just go away. Because this is serious. Oh, yeah. This is very serious. These are criminal. And we haven't even gotten to the SA and his sons even being involved. Even criminal charges can be brought up against his sons. Like 100%. Meek Mill, Usher. Charges can be brought up against these people. 100%. Shout out to Miss Duval for gifting a membership. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you. If you got that membership, please put some flames in the chat and thank Miss Duval for sending you a membership. Thank you so much, sweetheart. But um, yeah, this is big. Now, Cassie's lawsuit would have been massive if she would like would have went through with it. But I understand why she settled. Um, this is different. <laughs> this is different. And this is not the like more people are going to come forward. Because it takes to not fear. Most people don't sue or try to get charges brought up upon people out of fear or thinking nothing will be done. Or I'll try to get stuff done. It don't go through and then I'm missing. Then I'm just gone. Something just happened to me and no one cares, you know, because they don't know, you know, um, and whatnot. So it's a fear. Once that fear is removed then it's a little easier for other people to come about, you know, it's a little easier, but I'm about to start dedicating my time to making like a real surviving Diddy. Like I want, it's going to be really professional, really professionally done. The audio, everything is going to be great. I'm going to put like a movie um, together, like a three part movie. It's probably going to be like four to five hours long. Um, and I'm going to drop them in parts, but I'm going to do a real one because now we have, so much updated information on so many different things that we can finally tie two and two um, together. Yeah. 
So that's going to be dropping. Um, I want it out before April. So I'm, that's what I'm going to be working on next month here on YouTube is bringing like a real production together. People's testimonies about him, um, recorded interviews, written interviews, all of that. Like I want to put together like a banger. A four part, five, four to five part banger um, of like a real surviving Diddy, you know. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working on next month for March Madness. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing that. So yeah, this is just the beginning. Um, I'm going to cut it here because we have a live to do over on coffee. We will be back. I feel like we should do a, mor a, a morning live about this. I don't know because I have some tea about Wendy too. Because I want to break this down fully, and then I want to like go over some things in the past that like with Chris Brown, Usher, Cuban Gooding Jr. I, I want to like it's so much to talk about. It's so much to talk about, but I want to get through the lawsuit first. Okay, I want to get through this. It's like seventy something pages. I think we got through like ten or fifteen. I think it was you know longer, but it's like it's kind of like short, you know, because. I'm like 70 pages. Um, I wanted it to be like four or five hundred. <laughs> I wanted it to be like four or five hundred pages, you know, but um, it's not. So it is a lot, it is, it's so much, it's so much. Um, so we're gonna go over to coffee and do our roast, but um, because on coffee, I'm not gonna be on it tomorrow because I'm getting ready for March Madness. Um, we will be um on wine and new tea tomorrow. Shout out to Tasha K. Um, we'll be over there. Um, so we have a busy day tomorrow. So I'm not going to be on coffee, so I'm going to go over there tonight. But we will be over here on YouTube multiple times um, tomorrow. So, yeah, because we're going to be reading more of the lawsuit. And then I want to do a live on, like, an update like of other people that have came forward and said certain things about certain people that is in this lawsuit. Um, so, yeah, we will be back. I may bring the glasses back, too. You never know. So I love you guys. So... Yeah, we're going over to coffee. I know they're over there waiting. So um, we're going to go get that done. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody, for the super stickers, the super chats, liking the video. Thank you for gifting memberships and all of that good stuff. I love you all. I love you all. Until the next show. Bye.